Hi everyone, my name is Unjo Park, uh, executive chef of Momofuku, and today we're going to make a knife cut noodle in a chicken doenjang broth topped with a chili crunch. We're going to start by making of the potato noodle. Um, I just have Idaho potato here. I'm using a fork or for me it's a chopstick. I'm just gonna quickly poke a hole. And these are washed already and I'm just gonna just put it in the microwave for about 8 minutes. And if you need to, we'll flip it and cook their they're tender. About uh, small to medium potatoes should take 8 to 12 minutes. Now it's been about 12 minutes and as you can see, I could actually crush with my hands. They're all cooked. Grab a small knife to open. From here, it should be very easy to peel off the skin. We only need about a quarter cup. We're going to mash in our bowl, so don't worry about breaking them into small pieces for now. Same amount of water. Little of a neutral oil. Here I have a grapeseed. Salt. And AP flour. So with my bare hand, I'm gonna start lightly gather the flour with the potato. Once they start to come together, you can press them. The texture of this noodle, because it's cooked directly into a hot soup, is very tender and soft. We're going to knead up pretty vigorously for five minutes. Once the dough feels nice and elastic, let's go ahead and rest for 30 minutes. So this dough is ready. I'm just going to wrap it in a Ziploc bag or plastic. And into the fridge for 30. The doughs are resting now. We're going to go ahead and make up chicken broth. Turning up the pan into medium. Here I am starting with a grape seed. Here we're going to make scallion, ginger, and a garlic. It's a knob of garlic. I'm going to peel this. I cut it thinly against the grain and into the small julienne. And for garlic, I'm just going to slice them. Heat it up, stir with the garlic, you hear the sizzle, and the ginger. It smells so good already with the toasting garlic and ginger. I'm only going to chop scallion white. Scallion green, we're going to reserve it for the garnish of the noodle. Quickly chop. This aromatic oil, I started playing around while making a family meal at the restaurant that I'm working right now. Um, basically, I've been just infusing any other aromatics, onions, galleon, ginger, garlic. You'll see from here, after we make the aromatic oil, we're going to cook our chicken. So you can definitely use it to cook any other protein in there. So this is roasting nicely. Gonna lower the heat a little bit to medium. Let's go ahead and cut our chicken. Boneless, skinless chicken thigh, little strips. I'm not cutting into too small because I want to pick it out and eat it with the noodles when they're done. And directly into the aromatic oil. There's uh, plenty of oil in the pot. So I'm not searing the chicken. It's actually cooking as like a pumping the chicken in there right now. Beautiful. We're only gonna cook until the chicken outside of the chicken is white. white. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of doenjang. Doenjang is a fermented soybean paste. It might be easier to source miso. Just doenjang is a little more funkier and a little more um, longer than miso. Miso is on a little sweeter side. Let's deglaze with mirin. Mirin is a cooking wine. Other than adding little sweetness, it gives that little um, velvety mouthfeel. Time to add chicken stock. Uh, this chicken stock, I got it from the market. Uh, make sure if you do buy it, uh, it's a low sodium so you can control how much salt or the seasoning you can add to. If you make a big batch and you want to reserve it for later, I will definitely strain so there's no chicken meat or the vegetable and keep the base frozen and then when you're ready to use, defrost it night before and refresh it with the fresh vegetable. So when this comes to a boil, I'm just going to lower the heat. To add a little soy sauce, a 
drop of fish sauce and I'm actually going to boil a sesame oil it's gonna get uh, blended and make it more creamier okay let's get the finish ready I have momofuku chili crunch that I'm gonna add a little bit of raw garlic, soy sauce, vinegar to make it more little life here. Just like the scallion white, I'm just going to chop them. Uh, this is a toasted and seasoned Korean seaweed. If you don't have it, it's an, just an optional thing that I like to add to give a little more flavor. If not, if you have regular uh, nori, you can toast it lightly on your stove and just crush it with your hands. If you don't have momofuku chili crunch, but if you do want to make it a little spicier, when we first making the aromatic oil, before we add the chicken, go ahead and add up a tablespoon of a chili flake. Just gonna so I don't dirty my hands using a Ziploc bag. So those being rested for good 30 minutes, I could definitely feel the elastic. And from here, I'm gonna roll it and go right into the broth. So I'm gonna be pretty generous with dusting the flour. This is a quite wet dough. There's a cooked potato inside, so it's gonna continue to get water. So once it's a flat disc, I'm gonna start rolling. Just gently going up and down. Not as thin as like a spaghetti, but definitely like linguine size. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna roll over gently and double roll. I'm not trying to be make it perfect even layer because I do like I think the beauty of hand cut noodle is that it, they're all different and they got all the different texture. I'm going to roll them so it's easier to cut. I like to leave a little space so I can grab after cutting it and just pull it apart. For this cutting the noodle, we're not slicing. We're actually just cutting down straight to make sure they're not moving. So as you can see, I'm just gonna hold the bottom and just pull the noodle. Yay. Unlike any other noodles that you cook it in boiling water and then put it into a broth, kalguksu is the only noodle that I know. We just put it directly into the hot broth. The starch in the noodle is gonna break down and making the soup very thick almost. If you make the dough and keep it as in a dough form, it will last up, up till third day. But third day, since it has the potatoes in there, it's gonna start to turn gray. So the broth is boiling, I'm going to add the noodles. While noodles are cooking, I'm just gonna get the rest of the garnish ready. Alright, so I'm gonna get chili crunch. Mix well so you get some chunks and the oil together. From here, I'm going to add a nice spoonful of raw garlic. Koreans are notorious for eating garlic, especially raw. Um, I think adding raw garlic to this dish, since it's so rich and umami, you know, it kind of brightens. So nicely chopped garlic right into the chili crunch. Distilled vinegar and a little more soy. After you drop the noodle, you don't want to stir it up so much because the noodles are still very raw. They're going to break into small pieces. You know when they're done, it's not a mush when you bite into it. It actually bounces back. The noodles are all ready to go. And that's it. Time to finish. Just going to ladle the noodles first. From here, I'm just gonna drizzle chili crunch. Scallion. Toasty game. And last, sesame seed. Toasty sesame seed, before I sprinkle on the plate, I always put it on the palm of my hand and crush it with my finger just to kind of crush them. Here we have it. Spicy knife cut chicken noodle. It's really good. <laughs> um, I think what really brings this together is a chili crunch added with surprisingly raw garlic and vinegar. Really brightens this dish up. It's not a set recipe I want you to take from here. I want you to look at the noodle and see different options of noodle dish that you can do. Uh, for the recipes, 
from this episode, please click the link below.